AI and use their voices. It's called Dead Legend from Springs. Let's go. Oh my God. with the clothes. I mean, Bad Boy and all that shit was strong in the 90s. No, You can't deny that. They was right, the strongest right. team in the 90s. That's all you heard. That's all you heard on the radio. Right. At that time, Big, Mace, 112, Total, Little Kim. I'm saying yeah, you, Kim. you heard Bad Boy was strong, you know what I'm saying? So you can't deny him that. <laughs> Junior Mafia, yeah, Craig Mac, Craig Mac, Black Rob, G Depp, yeah, G Depp, yeah. 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 yeah, he had the squad, Black Rob, yep, Black Rob, rest in peace. Um, yeah, Puffy had mad people, man. Yeah, they 
it's crazy. It's crazy, you know. I don't know. It's just like, you know, the winter of the time, the night is like the, the golden era. And we're here in 2024. We're hearing all the nonsense and the legends. You know, and I think it's, it's a bad situation all the way around. People are out here to get money. Some people going out their way to get money. Yeah. Yeah, some people are going out their way to get money, but it's just to me it's just the um it's just the distraction. I think all this Diddy shit is a distraction. Because you gotta you gotta ask yourself why they let all this shit out now at this time and and point. Because right. all because all this stuff Ben was going on, like anybody that's everybody that know about the industry that associated with the industry know about would go on. Everybody know about the drugs, the sex, the wild parties, you know, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So he, he wasn't the only one participating in all in all the madness that they trying to convict him for now. Right. You know, like okay, so there's a door, right? Mm. You know, if I'm, I know I'm going to. I'm, to, I'm, to, I'm, to, I'm, to, I'm not gonna sit there in. I'm not gonna sit there and be uncomfortable at the parties, the after parties. All these women put themselves in a position. Now, okay, pink cocaine or whatever he's doing, you know what I'm saying? They know it's a party. You know it's gonna be crazy. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the parties, but everybody wants to be famous. And I'm not saying what they do is right. We can be wrong. But every time somebody you know, of our complexion, our brother, with a lot of money, he has to like the number one bad guy. Or was it? Or was it right? Because it's it's only wrong when one party um ain't with what the other party want to do. Like 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 in reality, everybody was at the parties. Everybody was indulging. All the chicks that they said you know the sex trafficking and. The advances that he made at these chicks, they all they all would knew what time it was, like you said. They all attended. They they ain't new to this. They right. know how everything go down. So if you don't want to be a, if you know how things go down and it's too wild for you, you don't even go to the party. Right. Or you know what I'm saying? Right. You don't even put yourself in the position. Because you already know how it go down. You know what I'm saying? But Everybody that's how you with the money. Is it? I mean, every, to me, all everybody that in that situation was getting money because everybody a part of the um. Everybody a part. It's the industry. Everybody's a part of it. Everybody's a part of the drugs, the drinking, the sex. The, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's a part of it, and everybody's um, getting money off of it some way, somehow. Right, right. You know what I'm I think it's just the media trying to make it look like what it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't believe that none of these people wasn't with it. Like everybody know what time it is. Like we ain't even in the industry like that and we know what time it is. Right. Just by hearing just by hearing the stories. You know what I'm saying? It ain't something that we wanna go to and be affiliated with after the stories we heard and we ain't even been there. You know what I'm saying? So the people that's there and seeing it and bear witnesses, like they they make their own choices to put themselves there you know what i'm saying i just think people i just think people was with the program i just think the media is making it got to make it like certain people are victims right you know they got to make it like people are victim of diddy you know, now, now they're making this whole thing survive in diddy like you already see it's going into uh uh it's going into a tv show people getting up there saying all the things that Diddy did to them. Just like R. Kelly. They gonna remix that on him. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't try to send another black man to jail. We tried. Yeah, they... That's why he's they try. They try, but I don't think, like, I'm gonna keep it 100. I don't even think he gonna go to jail. Yeah, that's that. FBI, no formats. Yeah, this is a, to me this is a, a distraction i i believe that they they paid him to this whole thing that we seen was already pre 
you know, determinated to be what it is. He just playing his part. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's come very comfortable. Oh, yeah, because he know he got people protecting him. He know who he got behind him. Right. You know what I'm saying? As long as he keeps the mouth quiet. Because you know that elite yeah. take you out real quick. Yeah, like, yeah, he know a lot, but he ain't, right now he ain't telling on nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't doing like um he ain't doing like a Kanye yeah. laughing his mouth telling on everybody. I'm no surprised. Speaking of Kanye, they came out yet. I know they tried with a um, physical trainer. One point. Yeah, but he's. I'm, I mean, Kanye a Fed too. All these dudes is Feds. All these dudes is protected by the Feds. You know what I'm saying? All these people, the Feds and the CIA, control hip hop. That's just what it is. That's what hip hop was created to be. Once they infiltrated it, they was able to um, manipulate it and weaponize it against against black people. And all these people. All these people playing their part. Jay, um, Diddy. He's quiet. Jay's quiet. Yeah, he's quiet, but he's a part of it. Jay just know how to be quiet and just be easy. But he's going to have his day. You know, he's going to have his day, too. But he's also the head of a gang consortium. DJ Khaled, Swiss Beats, Rick Ross, you know, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, all these people. You know what I'm saying? They all they gatekeepers. They're they're part of what you call the black boule. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but that's what that's what they are. They the gatekeepers. I seen the history about that. I can't believe it. Yeah. Or you know, mostly all our all our black leaders throughout history was a part of it. Right. So at the end of the day, black history was always being controlled by Europeans because they always had um, these black boule people to play their part in history. So, you know, to do what they needed them to do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in reality, our history has been infiltrated and controlled and manipulated by the global elite because there was always black house niggas that would do the, you know, help them keep their own people down. Or carry out their agenda on their own people for money and power and fame and stuff of that nature. So Diddy definitely one of them. Jay Z definitely one of them. Khalid is definitely one of them. Kevin Hart is definitely one of them. Swiss Beats, Rihanna, all these people that we seeing, they they're the gatekeep. Oprah. Oprah. You know what I'm saying? Tyler Perry. These are. These are your gatekeepers. In the religious too. What you say? What you say? T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. Yeah, all these dudes. Cleflo, Cleflo Dollar. Yeah. You know, all these, all these black guys. Um, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York. Absolutely. You know, you know what I'm saying? All these people are, um, they just... They they're gatekeepers. That's what the boule is. That's why they symbol is the um the geffen, the geffen or the sphinx symbolizes the um the protector of the gate. That's why it has a head like a lion, wings like an eagle. And, um, what you say? You see that symbol at city hall, right? See the city. What symbol? The um. Yeah, the Geffen because it's um, it's the symbol of protection. That's what it symbolizes. It protects the gate, the lion. You know, with ties in with the, with ties in with the sign Leo. You know what I'm saying? It, um, it's the protector of the gate. So the black boule, that's what they are. They're gatekeepers. They're the protectors of the gate for the global elite. Right. Even Obama, Obama falls in with them. Yes. That's another reason. That's another reason why Diddy won't get locked up. Because remember, he um he supported Obama. 
Right. So he, right. so he got people in high places, like Obama, which is definitely the part of the black boule, to make sure that nothing happened to him. Yeah. So, um. When they first raided Diddy's house, what was the first thing on your mind? I was su I was surprised they waited so long to raid the house. I thought that was going to been happen. But then I just I just threw that all this shit was just a look for TV. I knew he wasn't going to be there. I knew that I knew they just had to make this look good for TV. So they came on the military style like he's some killer. Or you know, some on some gangster shit like that where they had to bring in like a military platoon, but I knew all that was the theatrics for TV. You know, at the end of the day, because I know, I know that he's a, I know he's been an informant ever since the '90s, and the Fed's been tracking him. So I, I knew that the whole playbook that he wasn't going to be there, and they were just going to make it look like just for TV. Okay, I, I felt as though they came with an assassination plan. Oh. They jumped out and they made a mistake and shot him. See, I think it's two sides working. They're really working together, but they're working against each other. I think it's two secret societies that's going on right here. It's two, sec it's two secret societies when you really talk. There's many secret societies, it's just not two. But when we talk about when we talk about ideology and what these guys believe, the only the only thing that they um they really clash on is how to go about articulating the agenda. But in but in reality they they all believe the same thing, but certain groups believe that it's supposed to be applied a certain way. And the other group thinks that it should be applied, you know, their way. So they're really together. They really have the same agenda of what they want to do, but it, it comes to a point where they they disagree of how it's supposed to go down, how it's supposed to unfold. Right, right, right. You know. So you have you have those that what they call the robber barons. The robber barons are your um your global elite who are corporate um moguls. You know, like your Rockefellers. Your Carnegie, your DuPonts, these are like your corporate moguls. Right. And they're they're the ones that dominate in the corporate field and their their thing is basically capitalism. Johnson and Johnson, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Groups like that. And they're more of your conservative Republicans. You understand? But they're about capitalism. Then you have another group, they're more environmentalists. They control the environment. So those that control the environment, those the ones that dictate um, their power, or I could say um, put their power on the ones that's corporate, because when you're corporate, you have to follow environmental rules, if you understand what I'm saying. So the environmentalists, those global elite that's environmentalists, they have a little bit of control and power because they can always tax the corporate global other half of the global corporate elite you understand so these two factions ones that's environmentalist and the other ones that's corporate they they clash they all like i said they all believe in global domination but they all have their way of how they do it and so you know these two can clash and then you you might hear certain environmental laws that are bad for corporate people, for the corporate. You understand? And then they're, the corporate will fight up against those using their money to try not to get dominated by the environmentalists. You understand? Um, let me, um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to read something quick, fast, so you'll understand. I guess Wikipedia can explain a little bit better, but this is what. You know, why well, he does that? What y'all think, man? You know, leave the um, comments down below. You know what I'm saying? You know, some of y'all with Diddy, some of y'all against Diddy. You know, did he do it? Did he, did he done? Did he so, so when you start talking about your global elite, 
like I said, you have your environmentalists and you have your industrialists. They are more your corporate um, people. That's your, your big moguls. That's corporate people. But they're the industrialists. They're called your robber barons. They are the ones that are your conservative Republican who started back in the days with the Union. So when we go back in the history, we talk about the Civil War, you had the Confederate and you had the Union. The Union, who were industrialists, who started the Industrial Revolution, they were your conservative Republican. You understand? And they were the ones that stood for the, um, the American flag that we see today. But then you had your Confederates. They were more agricultural. You understand? This is where slavery come in and picking cotton and tobacco and all that other stuff. They were more democratic. You understand? But what a lot of people don't know, the Confederate was the army and the money of the United States. They were more powerful than the North. They had more money and they were they were more strong militarily that's why they could separate from from the north right you understand right. so you so you had your democrats and you had your um republicans and like i said your industrialists were your republican conservatives and they were your robber baron so let me read this and so you get a little understanding it says the robber barons is a term first applied as a social criticism by the 19th century the muckerackers and others to certain wealthy powerful and unethical 19th century american businessmen see american businessmen 19th century american businessmen the term appeared in that use as a early as the august 1870 um issued of the atlantic monthly magazine by the, 19, by the late 19th century, the term was typically applied to businessmen who used exploitative practices to amass their wealth. So you hear that. They used exploitative practices to amass their wealth. So they was into corruption to gain wealth and power and things of that nature. It says these practices included unfettered consumption and destruction of natural resources, influencing high level of government wages it says influencing high level of government wage slavery you hear that wage wage slavery is something that we go through now if anybody that work a, a nine to five that's what that's that's what that'll be called wage slavery so that's something that's influenced by what they call the robber barons who are nothing but your conservative republicans that were part of the union who brung in the industrial revolution right it also goes on to say squashing compet competition by acquiring their competition to create monopolies or trusts that control the market and schemes to sell stocks at inflative prices to unexpected investors the term combined the sense of criminal robbers and legitimate aristocrats in a republic so you you see remember what i was saying they was the republic right. so right here right here it says it just backs up what i said it says the term combined the sense of criminal where you get the word robber and illegitimate uh, aristocracy you know the the aristocracy is the high class the wealthy and it says the illegitimate aristocracy in a republic which we live in a republic so remember i told you the republic is the conservative republicans that's about capitalism and they were the ones that was for the union they were the ones that wanted to get rid of slavery and they wanted to bring in the industrial revolution and the industrial revolution was based on text what they call textile which deals with cotton and fabric and things of that nature and this is the reason the cotton gin came into effect because the cotton gin found the better way to pick cotton and to weave and knit cotton you understand and so they they wanted to put the um which comes out of slavery out of business but check this out this is real deep because 
here goes all the people that's a part of the robber barons or your global businessmen, right? It says the list of businessmen labeled as robber barons. You have John Jacob Astor. We know the Astors is a big Illuminati family. They the ones that own Extoria, uh, Waldorf Extoria in Queens. That's them. Yeah, they in New York. Then you had Andrew Carnegie. You know, Andrew Carnegie, he dealt with steel from Pittsburgh and New York. Um, Jay Cook, financer, comes from Philly. Charles Crocker, railroads. He dealt with railroads coming from he from California, his family. Mm. Edward L. L Edward L. Um, Dorney. He's into oil. His family comes from California. Um, James Buchanan Duke, who dealt with tobacco and electric power. They're from Dorm, North Carolina. Um, it's a it's a whole bunch of names. You got the J.P. Morgan. You know the Morgans are another big Illuminati family, and they deal with finance, industry, and consolid industry consolidation, and they own Chase Bank. You know what I'm saying? Right, and, we, that's just crazy. and we know about John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil. They own the the oil business. So you have a whole bunch of the, it's a whole list of these guys. I can go on all day. You got Jeff Bezos, Amazon, Washington Post, Elon Musk, technology, automotive industry, California. So they're even on the on the list as the wealthiest rich businessmen that AKA are called um robber barons that um they basically control all the banks. They run Wall Street. Um you know, this is the stuff. This is the stuff that they into. Mark is on there, huh? Mark Zuckerberg. The no, nah, they don't have. They don't have him on there, but you know, he's one of them. You know that. So these are the. These are one side of the people that run the world. You understand? And then you have the other side, who are more environmentalists. They want to control the environment. One, one want to control the wealth and power the wealth and money or resource and the others the other group want to control the environment the whole environment you understand so that's what that's about but these people that I, that we name they run wall street they control all the banks and things of that nature and they're the ones that control the music business they're the upper echelon of the music business that you never hear about that you never see and they push all the buttons and pull all the strings. And when we talk about Puffy and Jay-Z and Khalid and Rick Ross and Kevin Hart and Tyler Perry and Oprah and things of that nature, these people, they're the puppet. They're the black boule that work for these global elite that I just named that run the industry. So when when... When a person like Puffy is in in tune with people like this, who pull all the, who push all the buttons and pull all the strings, um, as long as he play his part, ain't nothing gonna happen to him. He's, they're always gonna protect him. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. It's just like when we. It's just like when we go. How's Clyde Davis coming to the role? Well, Clive Davis coming to the role. Well, let me set up while Clive Davis coming to the role because I want I want people definitely to hear this. Because he's he's a real big important piece when it comes to Puffy. But I'm going to show you his connection of who he's in tune with the the global elite that I just named or the the robber barons that I just named that control the world, he's he's connected with these people. So give me a minute. Let me bring this up. Of course, um, this is this way it gets real deep, and you can see the connection with Puffy, him, and all the rest of these guys that you know played up on on TV. They play like they're fighting against each other, but at the end of the day, they're all connected. Right. 
So, so we know that Clive Davis was the one that gave um, Puffy his start with Bad Boy. Wait, let me um, let me do this first. So and I hope y'all paying attention. Because you know this is the breakdown. How do y'all you know sit there and judge clown and have the memes of sexual preferences? It's a joy that is it's great. See a lot of y'all see people can't people the way these this um the LPG community is so big now and they done made it popular and they done made it Hollywood. Um and they it's in society now. People people can judge but it is what it is. And they and they're norm and they normalizing it. So when we hear the things that Puffy doing and people are judging them, this is this is becoming an everyday lifestyle that they made normal. So it ain't nothing really people can frown on it and say whatever, but it's a part of it's a part of his lifestyle. And in America you in in America you have you have the freedom to have any lifestyle that you want now. That's the way they're making it. You know what I'm saying? So we have to understand just like you got a heterosexual lifestyle, now you also have a, you know, a homosexual lifestyle that's out there now. It's not in the closet. It's becoming normalized, you know, and it's what it is. That man didn't you know say, yeah. There's a lot of sexual allegations, but I never heard him say, okay, you got me. You know what I'm saying? Well, they don't have, they don't have nothing. They don't have nothing on Puffy. All they have was civil suits. People coming with civil suits. He done paid these people. What about as far as, he, as, far as him being gay? I mean, they didn't know. He said a lot they, of gay things. He did a lot of gay things, but he never actually said, "Yo, I'm gay." Yeah, no, he never. He never um came out and said it, but he got caught out there. He got caught out there many times by people, you know what I'm saying? And he don't choose to come out and say that he's that. I guess he just want to keep it on the low and, you know, do his thing. He don't He don't have to say it. You know, it's, it's his right to keep it on the low and do it how he's doing it. But everybody know. People know how he get down. So when you hang out with this guy and you party with this guy, you drink and do drugs, you already know what's going to happen. So don't... um. Don't act like you a victim because you put yourself in that situation. So um, I backed up all the way to Bad Boy, and then we're gonna get into Clive Davis, right? It says it says Bad Boy Records is an American record label found in 1993 by rapper Sean Puffy Combs. During the late 1990s, the label signed numerous artists, including Notorious B.I.G., Faith Evans, Mace. 112 total the locks craig mack shine and carl thomas at his peak bad boy was worth an estimate of 100 million it says during two it says during 2000 the label signed french montana machine gun kelly janelle monse cassie and amongst others in 2003 Combs created a successor label, Love Records, to independently release his fifth solo, his fifth studio album, The Love Album, and Off the Grid. So we see that, you know, this is Bad Boy and all these people that he signed. Now, what a lot of people don't know what well, is coming out now, before Puffy got with Clive Davis. And he was starting his he was starting his label. He didn't have the money. He didn't have the money really to start his label and get it off the ground like the way it's off the ground now. So Puffy had a lot of affiliations with people in the streets that was giving him money investing inside Bad Boy, you know. And these were big, you know, drug dealer, kingpin, gangster type figures that was helping him out. So this is where the feds got on him once he started associating himself with people like Haitian Jack, King Tut, Jimmy Henchman, um Meech, BMF, um and other other um gangster figures like them, 
that's when the feds started coming on them because those guys already were in the criminal world and the feds was already watching them you understand so that's why i said the feds been watching puffy ever since the 90s you understand because he was because of who he was affiliating himself with and the people he was taking money from when he was at the low start of building a bad boy right you understand one of his one of his close um his close homies um anthony anthony jones aka wolf the one that got killed in atlanta right. with the whole conflict with bmf he was he was affiliated with a crew that was a big drug dealers um the guys that he was running with from what i heard all these dudes got life sentences triple life sentences that's how much money they was getting and they were the ones that was giving money to a bad boy back in the early days so you understand so puffy been being watched by the feds of course of who he was affiliated with and then eventually they put the pressure on him and he cooperated he started to cooperate but this is what i wanted to bring home to people it says the parent company of bad boy is Bertelman music group which is bmg right right all right let's go into bmg right it says bmg was a division of a german media company the Bertelmans, before its completion of sales of the majority of its assets to sony corporation of america so they bmg sell they sell to, to sony right mm -hmm. Right, we know Sony is one of the big three. You got B, you got um Universal, you got Warner Brothers, and you got Sony. Those that's the big three. It used to be six major record labels, right? But then that that six those six major record labels became three, which is BMG, Universal, um BMG Universal and Warner Brothers, right? So it says. We're talking about um, BMG, right? It right. says BMG started off as RCA. Did you know that that BMG used to be RCA before it was um, yeah, it was RCA. And it said RCA is an American record label owned by Sony Music Group, a subsidiary of Sony Corporation of America. RCA is one of the Sony Music four flag labels alongside RCA. Former long-time Columbia Records, remember CBS was Columbia Records, and also Arista. So Arista, which is owned by Clive Davis, was a part of RCA. RCA became Sony. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So you see how all these labels are connected. Columbia, Arista, and RCA, they became Sony Music Group, right? It says RCA was fully acquired by the Bertelman in 1987. So the Bertelman BMG bought Sony back in 1987. So you see all these labels when we talk about Arista and we talk about labels like Epic and we talk about labels like Columbia. They all connected with each other because they all swallowed each other and became one. Right? So it says making it a part of Bertelman's music group, BMG, and becoming a part of Sony, BMG Music Entertainment after 2004 merger of BMG and Sony. It was acquired by the latter in 2008 after the dissolution, as the dissolution of Sony BMG and the restructuring of Sony Music. RC, RCA Records is the corporate successor of Victor Talking Machine Company. Do you know what Victor Talking Machine Company is? It was the first company to make the um the um record player. Remember we was building on the record player and how the um turntable and all that started? This is the origin of where the turntable started. RCA started it. And later on they became they they um came out with the record player and then they started getting into radio you understand so rc and then later on like it says they became bmg sony which has control of arista 
Columbia, Epic, right? But check this out. We can go further. We can go further, right? And you know the symbol of RCA is the record player with the dog. You ever saw that? That oh, yeah. symbol? Yeah. That's RCA. They the ones that started the record player. You understand to do that? Um, so the Bertelman brothers, the Bertelmans were the first one to, you know. But check this out, though. Now the Bertelmans, they own all the publishing, all the publishing houses. Like Penguin, Random House, um, what's the other one they own? They own a, they own, own mostly all the publishing houses. Um, Carl Carl Bertelman, he definitely took or put all that on Smash. You understand? And it's it says the Bertelmans under the leadership of Reinhard Mann went from being a mid-sized enterprise to a major conglomerate, offering not only books but also television, radio, music, magazines, and service. You hear all the stuff they own? Its, it's principles, divisions include the RTL Group, Penguin Random House, BMG, Arvato, the Bertelman Printing Group, the Bertelman's Education Group, and Investment. And the, the head of the family was Carl Bertelman. But the Mart, the Mart family... Now, the Mart family, which um, Reinhard Mart is affiliated with Carl Bertelman and the Bertelman family, they were a German family that came from out of Germany during the time of Adolf Hitler. You understand? And right. they were, and he was part of what we call the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic, Republic of Germany. He was part of the, uh, he was part of a, uh, what you'll call, a, um, what they call a secret society that was affiliated with the Vatican, with the Pope and all that. You know, you had, you had the, um, Knights of Templar, you had the Teutonic Knights, which were the German aspect, you had the Knights of Hospitaler, um, the Knights of Garta, um, these different knight organizations were under the Pope and the Vatican. You understand which was being controlled by the Jesuits and the Jesuits are the ones that control the FBI, the CIA, Mostad, KGB, Interpol, all the all your alphabet boy um, agencies. Right. The Jesuit, the Jesuits control all of them. You understand? So you see you see what this music can tie into. You understand? So this should go more this should go more deeper than um than just music. The, the people that run it and control it are global and they they control different aspects of the world. You understand? So let's go let's go back to what we was talking about and when we was talking about BMG and RCA, we saw that they RCA control Arista. Mm. And that's Clive Davis, right? Right. So Clive Davis is the one that put Puffy on. He's the one that gave him the first big money to start Bad Boy. So that means that Bad Boy is being controlled not just by Arista, but it's also being controlled by BMG Sony. What is the right, right. You understand? And we're gonna see how all this stuff connects because your big three, Sony, Universal, and Warner Brothers, are the big three, and they're all connected. You understand? So that's why. Let's go. Got to pick history of um, you know, connected with the, with the, the secret societies. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's taking them so long to arrest Puffy. Yeah, well, I just read to you that the Berg the Bertelman bro the Bertelman family, the branch off of the Bertelman family was the Mont family. And Reinhard Mont, like I said, he was Germ he was a German and Jew that right. came from around the time of Adolf Hitler. You understand? And he was a part of a secret society that was called the the um what was the name of them again? So you this is he came from straight out of a um a secret society that ties in with the Vatican and the Jesuits. 
You understand? So um, let's go. Let's go to Arista Records, right? So it says Arista Records is an American record label owned by Sony. It's owned by Sony, right? <laughs> A subsidiary of Sony Corporation America, the American division of the Japanese conglomerate Sony. So you have Sony, which is which is owned and ran by the Jews and the Japanese. That's where you that's where you get the Sony. BMG, BMG, the Bertelman family, are Germans, German Jews, and then you got Sony, and they merge with Sony, which the Japanese own Sony. Mm. It says it says the label was previously a division of BMG Entertainment, the North American division of German conglomerate Bertelmans, founded in November 1974 by Clive Davis and deactivated in 2011. Arista was a reestablishment in 2018, along with RCA, Columbia, and Epic. Those were just the labels that I told you that was owned and controlled by BMG, RCA. So all these record labels are connected, bro. And Clive Davis just had, with Arista, he was started by Sony, which is a German japanese um company you understand so these these record labels are all connected right when it comes to columbia rca epic you understand they're all under sony you understand and so puffy is under sony too because clive davis is the one that gave him his start so Clive Davis has connections with these German Jews and these aristocracy Japanese people who not are just into music, they're into all type, they're globally into all different type of things around them, globally, you understand? So this is where Clive Davis get his power from and so forth, Puffy is getting his power through Clive Davis through the same people. You understand? So that's that's where um Clive Davis ties in. You understand? Because the dude the dude that started Universal, um, Doug Morris, he's the one that got gave Clive Davis his start. And we're gonna talk about him a little bit if we can get to him. You know. I, I wanna say something about okay. they start. Mm. Um well Puffy start. Mm. He started like you know, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Uptown Records was his initially stomping grounds when he first started. And then he got fired. And he recreated himself from there. Yeah. Or everybody from that label, like I'll be short, Jim Porter, mm-hmm. everything and all that with him. You know? Yeah, they went with him. Because once he once he signed with Clive Davis, remember RJ Harrell. Like you said, who was part of the rap group Dr. Jekyll and Mr. High, he was the first um, product of Clive Davis, and then he, and then um, Andre Harrell was the one that groomed Puffy, and then later on, Clive Davis liked the Puffy so much that he got rid of Andre Harrell and he put him under Puffy, because later on, Andre Harrell started working for Puffy with Bad Boy. And right. Look what happened! Look what happened to Andre Harrell. He got killed. Right. You understand? Well, as soon, uh-huh. soon as he got put under Puffy, he got killed. Crazy. You understand? So Puffy rise to the stardom definitely was the power that um um Clive Davis had. But Clive Davis, you see who Clive? The type of people Clive Davis. Is connected with. He's connected with the Zionist Jews that run the music industry. Those from Sony and RCA, you know, like the um the Berterman family, like the Mon family, you know, he 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 gets his power from them. You understand? So let's let's go back a little bit to Bad Boy, right? Man, what's that? What you hear? It's 
for some loud, like a loud witch. It's going now. The train was going by. Oh. Hear that? Wow. Yeah. So when we talk about um Bad Boy, right? Yeah. It's, it says the parent company, the Bertelman Music Group, BMG. We talked about them. It says they had control over Bad Boy from 1980, from 1993 to 2000. Then Puffy switched from them and went to Universal, right? So this mm-hmm. is what we, this is where we really get deep when we start dealing with Universal, because we know that Universal is the octopus of music. They run and control everything now. So like I said, there used to be six record labels. Then it, the big three, which was EMI, Warner Brothers, and um, Universal, and then Universal um took over emi because if you i don't know if you know but universal is owned by seagram's gin you know seagram's gin oh yeah i heard about that yeah yeah and the the family that owns seagram gin gin is the brothman family the brothman family are another luminati family billionaires and they're jews zionist jews and they control Seagram and they own Universal and they're the ones that bought EMI which was part of the big three you understand and then right. later on Universal and Sony merged together you understand so now Universal is the the octopus of music and so Puffy left BMG to go to Universal now check this out it says Universal Music Group and referred to as Universal Music is a Dutch American multinational music corporation under Dutch law. UMG Corporation headquarters are located in Hilversum, Netherlands, and its operational headquarters located in Santa Monica, California. The biggest music company in the world. You hear that? It's the biggest music company in the world wow it is one of it is one of the big three the record label along with sony music you hear that mm-hmm. sony music and warner and warner music group acquires 10 percent of universal music group in march 2020 for three billion and acquired an additional 10 percent stake in january 2021 later acquired 10 percent of umg prior to the ipo on the euro neck amsterdam stock exchange the company went public september 21st 2021 at the valuation of 46 billion you hear what type of money these dudes is dealing with right it says the early history the company origin goes back to format of the american branch of deca records that was the name of universal before they became universal they were known as deca records wow it says deca records in september 1934 and its name and company logo originated from carl layman what's his name carl lay laymernet layminet lee the Universal Pitch, Universal Pitches. Although the the movie studio and the music business shares a common history, today former is part of Comcast and the latter and independent commercial entity. So they don't just do music, they also do the film industry. You understand? Right. right. So it says here, um, Universal Music Group formerly known as DECA, um, MCA. They originally was MCA. They went from DECA, MCA to Universal, right? And look who they talk about. Who's the main man? Lucius, G- Lucius Garange, right? right? He's the one that, he's the one that owns um, Universal. He's the one that owns Clive Davis. He owns all the record labels. Because remember, Universal owns, they're the world's biggest record um, conglomerate in the world. 
So they're they're on top of everybody. And Lucius Derange is the one that sits on the throne in that um conglomerate. And he's from he's from his bloodline goes all the way back to France. So we got like five minutes to tie this up. Mm-hmm. The deadline. So we'll have part two. You know, of Pub Daddy. Mm-hmm. The teacher, Rocco, he put it, he put it down. I appreciate him. He learned new things, you know. I mean, people are saying puffy this, puffy that. Sometimes you gotta do your, your history. You have to do your history and you have to understand things a lot better before you're so judgmental. Yeah, and not just and not just look at it as it all puffy puffy. Because what we explained today that there's higher people in higher positions that control all this stuff. Puffy's just a little guppy in a uh uh a ocean full of sharks. You right. Understand? There's a lot of sharks out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people doing things that you think is weird, but for people just a clown, another man when he's down is yeah. I, I don't see the gratification with the people in the world today. You know, because they because they blind, they just blind. They don't understand. They don't have full understanding of what's going on, and they're just going off with the media telling them, and it's really giving them a distorted meaning of what things really is. Like these people that we name, these powerful families, they're doing all the same thing that Puffy's doing, but you never see them in the media. Right. Right. You know, and you up there, there's people out there that was dancing, dancing mm-hmm. and playing the puffy and all of this. And, you know, now all of a sudden, y'all, y'all oh, he's gay. And, you know, you know, memes and joking. Like, y'all don't have problems. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Crazy. And, you know, it's one other thing I want to say when we start talking about puffy and uh, the sex trafficking and all this other stuff. In reality, Puffy ain't did nothing wrong because those women that they said that he had in his sex ring, mm-hmm. they all were part of an escort agency that Puffy owned. So what they were doing was working for Puffy and they were escorting for Puffy, which in California is illegal. It's legal. You understand? They try to turn it into prostitution, which it wasn't that because under the law, if a escort um does not take money doing while she's working if she takes money while she's working then that's illegal that's prostitution but whatever she does after her job is not illegal so what i'm saying to y'all puffy business was structured to have an escort service to have these women to be companions to all these different people and after that, these women can do whatever they want. If they want to take money and have sex with men and do all that other stuff, then it was it was good. So we can't just go off of he had a sex ring and he had these women against they will. No, they wasn't against they will. Well, they were working for Puffy and Puffy had his business structured as an escort service. And the escort service is legal in California. I so we got to I didn't even know that. You know, yeah, but so my whole thing is like, you know, and you, when you come in toward a situation like that, you know what you're gonna get into. So yeah, exactly. Know, it's all about it's all about the money. At the end of the night, at the end of the day, it's all about the money. Yeah, and everybody, oh. and in this business, everybody's making their money. However, wave is through escorting, selling drugs, throwing parties. It's is this is what they this is how people get their money in this industry you understand i mean it's it doesn't get talked about a lot and when it does come to the main media it gets um it gets distorted as something that's bad but this is everyday life in the industry you know right. people that's in the industry will tell you word and with that said we out we'll have our part two talking about diddy you know what I mean? I appreciate y'all yeah. coming by. Salute. Rocco in the building. DJ Vogue in the building. And we off this. All right, peace.